really didn't think about the Navy until I was applying for colleges and uh, you know considering money and how expensive colleges were I read about this place where you can go and it's free you know, that sounds pretty pretty good and uh, so I applied to the Naval Academy and was was lucky enough to get accepted I went to the Naval Academy prep school and then on and then it wasn't until uh, I was at the Naval Academy that I realized because you know, I naively I just thought oh well after the Naval Academy you just go be in the Navy I didn't realize what being in the Navy, there's different options that you can choose. So I was probably you know, into, well into my freshman year, sophomore year, where I really sort of learned about the SEAL teams and what's involved, and that intrigued me to continue to pursue the prerequisites that they have in place at the Naval Academy. You know, well, my parents were all for the Naval Academy. Uh, there's great financial benefit to going to the Naval Academy, and it's a great school. So we were all, as a family, we were very excited when I was accepted. And then it wasn't until, you know, I was out of plea beer and kind of able to have some forward vision about what my life would be like after the Navy did I really think seriously about the SEAL teams. And so my own parents were a little skeptical when I told them that I was actually going to select SEAL as a service selection. You know, now in hindsight, as at what I would tell them and what I would tell any parent that's out there that's a little bit concerned about their son entering the SEAL teams, is that there's risk involved in any military community, there's whether it's on a submarine or an aircraft. Aviation has huge risk that comes with it. However, what we do in the SEAL teams, it's just like we do here at NASA, it would be put there's a lot of people and a lot of effort goes into mitigating those risks and doing everything we can to uh, stack the deck in our favor. In the SEAL community, it's with detailed mission planning, knowing everything you can about the enemy and the terrain and the battlefield, and uh, preparing your equipment, being in the best physical shape and mental shape you can be. Um, and then a cohesive unit that's used to fighting together, used to, used to each other, and it's those guys that go out and execute the missions. Same thing we do in the space shuttle or in, in, on space vehicles, you know. You're riding on top of a rocket, a controlled explosion behind you, but there's thousands of people that are, have put the safety procedures in place to mitigate that risk. You know, in general, I think the military is really good for anybody. No matter how long you're in the military for, that couple years or career does nothing but benefit you in the long run, whether it be just to instill in you a sense of personal pride and a sense of accomplishment, or I can tackle anything, I can get the job done, and, or you're applying for a job in the future that you're really not sure about all of the details, it's out of your subject matter expertise. Well, my experience in, in the SEAL teams and with going through Buzz has given me the confidence to just know that I can figure it out and you can accomplish anything you want really and and if you look a uh, random sampling of life after the SEAL teams you'll see people in all different sectors of industry doing all kinds of things it's really that sense of accomplishment that you can do anything you want uh, if you set your mind to it My name is uh, Michael Crook. I'm a professor at Pepperdine. I teach strategy, which is the last class uh, MBAs take before they uh, graduate with an MBA. I grew up in uh, Aloha, Oregon, which is a very small town outside of Beaverton, outside of Portland. I was really excited to join the Navy and you know, see the world, as I said back then. And I remember getting on the plane in Portland, Oregon, and uh, taking off in the plane. I'd never been in a plane before. And I looked out the window and I said, I don't care what's going to happen in the next four years. It's already worth it. It was just like, it was like, yes, this is going to be a great adventure. Oh, I remember getting to boot camp and just crying my eyes out. just going, what did I do? You know, why did I do this? How could I even consider doing this? And I saw the, the movie for the SEAL teams and uh, Bud's training. I said, yeah, I, I think that looks great. And I didn't have anything guaranteed. So I said, I'll take the test. And I took the physical test and uh, passed it and got orders to Bud's. I was just, you know, like, whoa, I, there I was. And my class 89, I think we had close to 120, 130 other uh, recruits. And uh, they were all bigger and stronger and smarter than me. And uh, I didn't think I had really much of a chance to make it through. 
the beginning of Hell Week, they, they told us to do a, a four-mile timed run of it with as fast as you could go. And, of course, we all had PRs, our best times. And then a few days into Hell Week, they say, okay, we're going to do a four-mile timed run again. And this time, if you don't beat your time from the start of Hell Week, you're out. We're going to drop you. And of course, they weren't going to, but that's, that's what they said. And right away, people were ringing the bell, going, no way, no way, no way. I'm not doing that. I'm tired of this. And uh, uh, I didn't beat my time, but I came close to it. And uh, after reflecting on it, I just realized the power of the brain, you know, just what we could do if we mentally told ourselves we could do it. I've always felt like I had a secret sauce above people that hadn't gone through it. Bud's training was uh, really the turning point in my life. I had very little direction in my life up until that point. And I was also very much an individual. And um, Bud's training completely changed my way of thinking about that. In fact, I would have never made it through Bud's without, without uh, being a team player. That's the, that's the common denominator of all, however many of us made it, 17 or 20 of us that made it, was uh, we were all team players. That's the only way to get the great things to happen. Um, and I found that out in, in, in my business career is that you have to have great teams. So I, I spent uh, four years in the teams and uh, I got out and started going to college and um, we're just loving it. I mean, just all of a sudden this, this, I never had liked school before. All of a sudden I was loving school. I was loving learning. I was loving being an entrepreneur. I got a degree in uh, uh, forestry, worked in the woods a few years, and uh, then I got an MBA. And um, uh, my first job out of being an MBA was, um, you know, I was headed to NASA, and uh, I did a, uh, I got a call from one of my professors. He says, "Hey, would you like to do a weekend project at Yakima, which was a rack company for skis, snowboards, kayaks, bikes, and uh, for for your car?" And I said, sure. And I went there on the weekend, and they're all there. The people there are hanging out there in shorts. They're like, it's my tribe. I find my tribe. You know, all these snowboarders and kayakers, and they're hanging out, you know, just loving what they're doing. And I just said, whoa, I, this is what I've got to do. And that's how I got into the outdoor industry. So I was in the outdoor industry, which is, you know, I was a kayaker and a cyclist and a runner. I loved that stuff. So I found what I was really passionate about. And... Uh, and I kind of was just looking around and, and what was instilled to me in the teams is, okay, where do I want to be? What's my goal? What's my mission? You know, where am I going? And I thought, wow, outdoor industry, two best companies, REI and Patagonia. I said, well, I'm going to be CEO of one of those companies. And uh, that was probably 1988. And uh, I became CEO of Patagonia in 1999. Uh, you know, you, you, you learn in the teams how to think about about things, how to think strategically, and then down to the execution and how to get it done. When you come out of the teams, people want to be around you. They want to be around that positive energy, that can-do attitude. And being such a team player, people wanted to work with you because you were a team player. You weren't trying to be an individual. I think that so many of the lessons in the teams are so applicable to the business world. You know, I went from Yakima to uh, Moonstone, where I took over, a, you know, a much larger role. To my first kind of general manager, president role was at Kelty, the backpack company. And then Pearl Zumi, which is a you know great cycling and performance company, and then Patagonia. And after that, I went to a venture capital firm and founded that with Steve Case. And uh, you know, after I finished uh, with venture capital, I, I started teaching and, and consulting. So all of the lessons I learned in the team have helped me all along the way.